So if you're trying to break into tech or you're already in tech, you've definitely heard a million different things about learn data structures and algorithms, learn this language, master system design. But in reality, all of this is just problem solving in disguise. Everything else is a tool to help you do it. So the core to any tech role or tech job is problem solving. So if you're new, my name is Azo. I've been coding for over 10 years and I've been working in the tech industry for about eight years. I've held different roles and I'll list them out for you. I've been a software quality assurance engineer, software engineer. I've been a data analyst. I've been a data engineer. I've been a data scientist at some point and I've held these different roles and worn these different hats. And there's one main theme across all of these different roles and responsibilities that I've done. And the one thing is problem solving. So problem solving across all these different positions that I've held has been the thing that has got me the next position. I became so good at just whatever problem was handed to me, I was able to solve it no matter what. And I was able to use those tools in order to do that. So with software quality assurance engineering, essentially, if you don't know what that is, that's essentially making sure that code is quality before it gets deployed to production. So in that role, I got very good at identifying specific problems that would essentially, it's a little bit selfish, but make my job and my life easier. We had a bunch of old tests that would we would always have to run manually on our system in order to pass you know new code fixes or code changes if you're not familiar with the lingo it's basically called regression testing you're testing all the previous functionality before the fix and then obviously you test the new features you know with the new code all those regression tests took so much time and effort to kind of run through over and over and over again but what i learned at that time which i had been coding in college, but I was never really able in doing my own side products. I was never able to do it in an actual workplace environment. So I took it upon myself to learn C sharp and the testing, some of the testing libraries that were in C sharp. And I was able to essentially automate majority of the regression testing so that we only really focused on the new testing, we would have a test suite strictly for regression testing, and that would kind of run through every single time. And I was kind of the first, it was me and my coworker, he was very good at coding, like literally just coding, he was very good at. Problem solving is actually what I brought to the table. So he was able to code very well, and I would say he coded way faster than I did, but I was able to identify that problem that had been lingering for a while and we were able to come together and solve that problem together and kind of work on this all around solution. So in my next role, I was a, a software engineer and there were a lot of different things that we essentially had to do. Software engineering, we had to develop as well as as provide production uh, support. So with that being said, I have always kind of leaned toward the development side. So what I kind of did with the production support or working different, you know, troubleshooting tickets is there was a lot of stuff that we were just doing over and over and over again. So I had essentially a list or I guess you would call it repository of different code that I would run for each of these different tasks that we had to do. There was a lot of manual stuff like putting stuff in spreadsheets and, and writing you know, SQL queries. So I just made it very dynamic and kind of plug and play where I was able to do my production support role or my tickets kind of on autopilot. We would get some one-offs, you know, that wasn't covered by the stuff that I had created. However, you know, that, that stuff happens, but I was able to really focus on the development side and kind of honing in on my craft there and developing kind of help develop the system that we were actually building at that time. But I was only able to do that because I wasn't stuck in the production support realm so much. So I kind of supposed to be almost like a 80, 20 as far as like production production support was supposed to be our main focus and then development like 20 percent i kind of make it made it to where i i didn't say i flipped it but probably around like 70 30 and i was doing 30 percent production and those were only for like the one-offs and that type of thing and i was able to dedicate my time mostly to development and what i like to do so the next role is the data analyst role 
this data analyst role, I really took it as an entry level. Well, I came in as an entry level. I kind of had a little bit of imposter syndrome, so I didn't think I could do the next role above that. So I applied for the, you know, the lower role in order to kind of almost better my chances. And when I got into that role and I seen the current state of the team, when I stepped in there, there was a lot of room for automating different processes and really kind of like offloading the work of the actual associates. So I I went in and I started creating some internal apps. Once again, that kind of freed up my job and allowed me to focus on bigger and better things. And that's what essentially led to a you know promotion into a senior data analyst role. And then I kind of from there started building bigger solutions. And essentially at this point, I am an internal, I guess, tool builder. I don't know what to, you know, the title doesn't really speak to what I do per se, but I've made different power apps, power automate flows. I've done some data science, making some predictive models. I did some bunch of ETL pipeline stuff, building stuff in Azure, creating up flows and, and you know, different ETL pipelines in order to get data into, you know, tables in Azure and that type of thing. And then also working on data quality efforts in order to make sure all of our data is complete, clean, accurate, and that type of thing. But my point of the matter is, no matter what position you're doing, these are all problems that I had to solve. And if you make problem solving the core of what you do, the tools are just the tools, right? Don't get stuck to a tool and kind of hone in on that tool. It's great to have many tools, but don't get stuck on just acquiring tools. Get really good at problem solving first. The tools, you can use them whenever you feel, but the keys of it, problem solving, right? Throughout any role that you're doing, you are solving a problem and that is the key and core, all right? So how I like to think of it is there are three steps to solving a problem. And a lot of people are good at the first two and not the third. So it's kind of around what I just spoke on and all the different things that happen within my career. First thing is there are plenty of people that are great at identifying the problem, right? You ever have those people that are like, hey, this can be better. Do something about that. that. That can be better, but they can't do it themselves. That's the first thing. Those are what we have the most people, the identifiers, right? They can identify the problem. The second people are, they can identify the problem, suggest a solution. These are the people that say, hey, I see that we have a problem here. Maybe you can do something with such and such to, you know. So one of the things that happened in, you know, in my my life is my manager goes, I see there's an opportunity that we have different pipelines and processes that are failing, but we don't have any visibility on those things and why they are failing. So he identified the problem. He said, let's make some type of bot or automated process in order to try troubleshoot these processes across the team. They create vis visibility across the team. Good at identifying it, good at saying what we should put into place, a troubleshooting bot, can't do it himself, all right? I mean, wouldn't really want, want to do it himself anyway. He's a manager, why would he? All right, and then there's the third, and this is kind of the, the thing that's taken me this far, right? I have the first two. I can do the first two myself as well. There's people that literally can't do the third one. And I've learned this through my career. And when I say can't, I mean can't. Like, it's crazy, but can't. And the third one is executing the solution. People can find a solution because there's plenty of things that have been out there, right? It's easy to say, well, let's make an app to do this. But can you actually make that app? No, probably not. Not you, but people, right? So identify the problem, come up with a solution, and execute on that solution. If you can do all three of these, these will take you pretty much to most things that you want to do, right? You wanna be a data scientist, do these three things, and learn the craft of data science, you're there. Whether that be coding, you know, having to do brush up on your statistics and math, all of that, right? All these are different problems in disguise. System design, why do you need to know system design? Because you're solving a problem of how to design a system that's efficient, effective, and optimized, right? Why well, you need to learn data structures and algorithms so you can solve problems, usually with code, in order to get a specific thing done to solve a problem. Why do you learn a coding language? The same reason, so you can solve a problem with code. The core of all of this is problem solving. The better you get at problem solving, the more of an asset you are, the more leverage you have, which 
in turn allows you to essentially make more money and be able to do different things in your career. All right, so now I've talked about all of that, I'm gonna give you some real actionable steps that you can take in order to get better at problem solving. All right, so I've already explained problem solving is the key to success period. But how do you actually get better at problem solving? Let me give you four things that you can do to get better at problem solving. And I know you've probably heard some of these things already, but the thing is, is that it doesn't really change. The truth does not really change. All right, so here we go. The first one is always going to be, you gotta get your feet wet and you gotta do the thing. If you wanna get better at problem solving, you gotta problem solve. You wanna get better at basketball, you gotta go play basketball. It just is what it is. You have to learn by doing. How I recommend you do this is, for coding, find something that you pay for, a subscription of some sort, right? A smaller subscription if you do content you know one of the things that i'm trying to do right now is find out a better way to kind of automate or make my process a little bit better and how i make these videos to free up some time to think about more ideas and just make content better right find something in your own life or find a subscription that you pay for and try to replicate or clone that app but make it very tailored to what you want to do. That is one of the projects that, you know, I suggest you do. The next thing is you have to embrace debugging. Debugging is essentially a problem within a problem. You're trying to solve a bigger problem and you run into smaller problems along the way, AKA debugging, right? Debugging is probably one of the best ways to learn how to solve problems. It's literally iterating over different problems along the process of problem solving. So that has a compounding effect of the problems that you're actually solving. And doing this over and over again, just makes you better at avoiding those problems in the future. Therefore, you will tend to run into problems that are more unusual to you. Therefore, you can think of it as like a video game and leveling up. You're gaining XP every time you solve these problems. So the next way to get better at problem solving is being able to break down big problems into small chunks and be able to solve those more manageable and digestible chunks. If you always are thinking about how a system or an application is gonna work on a very high level, you will not be able to put things into place that well and you will get scrambled. Same thing I struggle with. If you keep thinking about, oh, I wanna build this type of app that does all these different things, it's so hard to actually execute on that because you have all these different working parts in your mind. So start breaking that big problem and say, okay, for this app, I wanna work on the user User interface but within the user interface I want to add a button here or you know a login here right take the big picture make it a little bit smaller and then make that even smaller and start there but once you finish that you move on to the next one and by the time you know it you're gonna have a full functioning app website or whatever that may be and the fourth and last one is a persistent right the best problem solvers aren't necessarily the smartest by any means I am NOT a genius not even close to being a genius, but there's one thing I can do, and it is solve a problem. All of the smartest people and, you know, big people had to solve a problem. What if Steve Jobs would have gave up on the iPhone? What if Jeff Bezos would have given gave up on Amazon? They all stayed persistent and they solved problems. So I know this may all sound very overwhelming and new, but it first starts with a mindset shift and you have to shift your mindset from I'm going to memorize all this and being able to regurgitate it later and have to switch it into I have a problem and I need to figure it out. Figuring it out is the biggest thing whether that takes you however long. You know, if you can figure out problems, you will eventually become faster and more efficient at solving problems. So even if it takes you four hours to solve such a small problem, over time you get better and more efficient and you'll be solving that same problem in a couple minutes, maybe even you know 30 minutes, 15 minutes, who knows? You just get better over time. But the key thing is you have to continuously you know, work that muscle in order to get better at it. So this is gonna be the end of the video. Leave me a comment about what problems you're solving. What are you doing in your life? Are you making apps, websites, what are you doing? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Love, peace, and chicken grease. See y'all next time.